Hey everybody, what's going on? It's James here with Crypto Common Sense and I have a Bitcoin slash stock market market update for you for March the 5th. Before I jump into the content for this video, please do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I don't do very many videos anymore, so it's important to be subscribed so you get notified. And of course, don't forget to check the description for a link where you can join Patreon for just $7 a month. That actually gives you access to a lot more frequent updates. All right. So bottom line is this. Right now, most of the markets in the United States, at least, are pretty overbought. I haven't looked at foreign markets. I don't really trade foreign markets, so I don't know anything about them. But the stock market has been undergoing a pretty severe correction the last several days, maybe even a week or so now. And this was not really shocking. And I'm going to start here because I firmly believe that Bitcoin is a correlated asset. It's more of what's called a growth asset where people are speculating on its growth. It's not really a store of value, blah, blah, blah. All right. So this is the US 100. And when we closed February, I actually shot a video, didn't feel like editing it. So I apologize. I'm just not getting this to you. But we basically had two very bearish candlesticks side by side. First, we had the shooting star and that was followed up. Excuse me. First, we had the spinning top and that was followed up with this shooting star type of candlestick. The probability was that this was going to move down. Not a guarantee, it's never a guarantee, and it's still not a guarantee that it's going to go further, but it definitely was a very bearish monthly looking chart. The month started out strong, started to move up, but it's since you know really fallen apart. If we take a look at a weekly chart, what we're going to find out is that this price action is not all that dissimilar from February and March of 2020. Back in February and March of 2020, we put in this lower weekly low, had a little bit of a dead cat bounce here, and then you know all hell broke loose and the market really, really fell out of the bed. Ever since March of 2020, it has not actually put in a lower weekly low. It's just been a series of higher highs and higher lows. Had this little hiccup here where there was a lower high, but then it put in a higher low and continued on with its uptrend. That is starting to change and there's about 16 hours to go before this candle closes so this you know could still be invalidated but last week what happened was on the nasdaq this weekly candle actually closed as a lower low but on the us 100 it actually closed just slightly higher so let me show you what i'm talking about real quickly so this is the actual nasdaq and you can see it closed under it but you know we're going to look at the us 100 here so it snuck back above it but now this is pretty firmly below it again this candle closes in about 16 hours if this were to close underneath this green line, like it looks very you know, possible, what I would expect next is probably going to be some type of dead cat bounce, some type of move up to trap the bulls and to uh, basically wash out bears and then the next leg down. That's what I would expect. Again, not guaranteed. I certainly don't have a crystal ball and I'm not seeing any setups that make me want to suddenly start longing the US 100, right? But you know, I'm mainly day trading stocks and trading options on stocks. So a little different. I'm not really looking for position and swing trades, but that's kind of a bearish looking chart, right? It looks pretty bearish. And when you start looking at that with all the other information that we have available, it looks possible or at least plausible that this market is finally starting to you know come to terms with reality again no guarantees i'm going to be very clear about that but if we look at this thing we can see the weekly chart looks pretty rough we can see that monthly chart looked absolutely terrible we can look at a daily chart we can see this thing is obviously put in a series of you know here's a higher low followed by a lower high lower low lower high lower low Right, so this is definitely a, a downtrend on the daily chart. It was also a head and shoulders pattern on this chart. And even though the US 100 is not gonna allow me to put volume on here, if I went over and looked at something like the QQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ, we'll be able to put volume on there. And we'll be able to see that yes, that was indeed, right, confirmed with high sell volume on that right shoulder. So that's certainly a head and shoulders. And that's certainly pointing toward more downside never a guarantee just you know a probability so the us 100 is looking very very rough the us 500 which is kind of the s p 500 and the us 30 they don't look great but they certainly don't look near as rough and what's really interesting about this is if we go and we look at the spreads between these and i'm trying to move fast here so i apologize if you don't know exactly what all this stuff means but I'm just giving you kind of a 30,000 foot overview. But if we look at the spreads between, for example, the DIA, which is the ETF for the Dow, and the QQQ, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ, we can see that there's a really significant spread going on, 
right? It's just dropping, 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 dropping. The last time it got down to these levels was actually back in 2000, which was during the dot-com bubble. Why is that important? Well, it's important because the experts out there, or many of them, or at least, saying that we're in an everything bubble. I agree with that. Most people who watch the channel know that I feel like we're in a huge bubble and that's going to end very badly for the majority of people. But I also think the NASDAQ and stocks, you know, tech stocks and, and you know, cryptos who are acting like tech stocks, I think they're in an even bigger bubble all by themselves, right? This is a measure of how the Dow is performing versus the NASDAQ. It's severely underperforming. You can see this. The last time it got to those levels was the dot-com bubble. And then, of course, NASDAQ dropped about 90%. Right? We can go back and look at the exact figure in just a moment. But we go over here and we look at this, and if we treat this like a normal chart, this is starting to put in you know, a double bottom. I don't like the fact that there's a tail that came down, but it's still double bottom-ish, right? If we put up like RSI on here, we're actually gonna be able to see that this thing got insanely oversold, right? This is down to 9.8 RSI on a monthly chart. Now we have bullish divergence on that monthly chart. It's coming out of that oversold territory. That tends to be the beginning of a very strong move up, which would mean that the NASDAQ is going to lose ground versus the other markets. And again, I view Bitcoin as being kind of like a tech stock in some ways. So I think that, you know, abodes, um, bodes, you know, poorly for Bitcoin. We can look at the, again, that's the Dow Jones versus the NASDAQ. We can also look at the S&P 500 versus the NASDAQ, and we're going to see the same thing. Bullish divergence down here, a double bottom looking to be forming. And we can see the last time we got to this level down here was never, right? Back here, got here, and we're below that level now. So double bottom down here on the difference to the mean, you know, bullish divergence here. These things are basically signaling the NASDAQ is cooling off, all right? If we go and look at individual stocks, we'll see a lot of really nasty looking charts. Not gonna go through a bunch of them, but one of them that a lot of people believe is in a huge bubble is obviously Tesla. I'm also in that camp. I believe Tesla's a massive bubble, right? Just last week, I had people arguing with me saying that $700 Tesla was a great buy. Obviously, they were dead wrong, right? Tesla fell all the way down to $600 today. If we look at this chart on a monthly chart, we can see a giant double top right here on the RSI. We can see this thing obviously went parabolic. Uh, we can see things like, you know, gaps all the way down around 40, 50 bucks, right? Right back here is a gap down around 400 and way the hell back here, there is a gap. If I can find it, that one was filled right there, right around $51. See it? And of course that was before the stock split. It was actually about 250 or 200 is where that gap was before. All right. So this just looks like a pretty typical bubble that's starting to pop. And again, we don't know if it's actually the top. You know, this could certainly be a correction. It needs to break through a lot of levels of support. But it's all the same type of deal as crypto. You start putting the volume on there and you can really see how there's no support up there. It's sports really back down there, you know, around fifty three dollars in the volume profile. And if you put it on a log chart, it becomes even more clear. And the reason, by the way, I'm pointing this out, and I'm going to go over my time, I could tell already, but the reason I'm pointing this out is because these tech stocks can go really, really far down, right? And still be, you know, bullish in the macro picture. And of course, if Bitcoin follows suit, if you're a crypto trader, you need to know that. Uh, for this to get back down to this old level of resistance flip support, you're talking about a 90% drop on Tesla. I'm not saying it's going to drop that. I have no idea where it's going. I do not own a crystal ball. I'm just saying that it's completely feasible. And if you start drawing up some things like Fibonacci levels, right? Had a nice correction back here, but haven't really had a nice golden pocket correction from this point forward. And that 80% retracement, which is the typical retracement of a parabola that breaks, is going to be down around this level, around 238, and there's really no support through there. So it, you know, it wouldn't make sense to me to go there and just stop. It, my opinion is going to go lower, right? Just in, an idea. And again, I'm not trading Tesla. The last time I took a trade on Tesla was actually in 2019. So you know, I'm not giving trade advice by any means. I'm simply saying that it's an example of how far these can drop. There is a stock that I shorted a few weeks ago called Neo. And it was actually 
uh, I believe it was a Chinese electric car. I, I don't even know that much about it. I just know that the chart looked good, so I shorted it, right? This thing ran up from around $2 all the way up to almost $70, and now here it is at $39, right? Just typical bubble behavior. So something to keep in mind, if the stock market continues to underperform, you know, Bitcoin tends to be correlated with that. So um, just something to watch out for. By the way, gold and silver are having pretty rough times as well. I'm not picking on crypto. You know, gold actually fell under $1,700 again. It also fell outside of this uh, downward sloping channel. And, you know, as far as gold goes, I'm definitely an interested party if it can, you know, get back down and test this a level of resistance flip support. And that'll also be inside the golden pocket here. So does it get there? No idea. Uh, but I am watching gold as well. Um, I am, you know, I have some gold for the long term. I own physical gold as well as gold ETFs. So ETFs are easy for trading. Physical gold is stuff you stack for you know years. You don't really have any intention of moving in and out of it. Uh, but I would definitely like to buy more gold down in this pocket if it gets there, right? So not picking on crypto. Uh, what some of this stuff points to is the dollar is simply gaining strength, right? It's it's kind of a side effect of that. If you look at the DXW chart, DXW, what's that? DXY chart, you can actually see that the dollar did make its way back down into this demand zone back here. It also put in a really nice double bottom. Uh, it's not closed yet, so we got to wait for the close. But if this closes above this level back here, that's going to be a confirmed double bottom on a weekly chart down inside of demand. And, well, I didn't mean to delete everything. And if we look at RSI, you can see that RSI didn't quite get down into the oversold territory, but it is starting to perk back up and starting to show some signs of strength. Got pretty far underneath. That's 200 moving average on a weekly. And when it did that back here, of course, we can see that it consolidated a bit and then moved back toward that average. So right here, starting to look like this was probably the bottom, at least for a while. And that's going to get a move up, which would, you know, suck the wind out of some of these other markets. Uh, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because, again, I don't have a crystal ball. And it's very difficult to predict where this thing is going, especially right now, because the market has been super euphoric. So a lot of times you get some TA that looks bearish and you know it, it works out to a certain extent and then a big buyer steps in, you know, an institution, whatever, kind of like with Tesla, they come in, they put in a you know a billion dollar buy and it just it runs the whole thing. But when I look at this thing on a weekly chart, which this week still has nearly three days to go, I do see a double top right here on RSI. It is a confirmed double top. This did close down here, so that's you know over and done. You know, taking it back now. I do see confirmed bearish divergence, so I want to be aware of that. I also see a weekly candle that right now, and it hasn't closed yet, looks very bearish, right? It looks like bulls try to step in, try to push it back up, but they failed and bears are taking back over. So if that continues that way, that's going to make me lean toward the idea that this is probably a cycle top, but not enough information yet, okay? So if we look at the 19-week moving average on this, we can see that 19-week you know, moving averages on the weekly chart have been the normal, you know, uh, retracements in bull markets. So, for example, in 2017, it would come down, test it, test it, you know, 30, 40% pullback to test it, and then finally we went parabolic and that was that. Bear market, same thing, and acted as resistance and would bounce off and go down. Even in 2019, it was a little wonky because we didn't get any good corrections. We just went parabolic right out of the gate. But when we did come back down and break through it, right, right, he was kind of nasty because it tested it. A lot of people probably thought, hey, it's time to go long. I wouldn't blame them if they did, but then it crapped the bed. But when it came up for that bearish retest here, it did its job and acted as resistance. Over here, it acted as support and up it went. And then again, we had the whole Corona crash or COVID crash, whatever you want to call it back here. All right. Since then, it did act as support over here. If you guys remember, if you're watching the channel, this is where I was a little bit skeptical and people were thinking that gap was going to fill. And I was smart enough not to short it, but unfortunately lacked the conviction to go ahead and take the long signal on that 19 week moving average. It acted as support like it was supposed to and up we have went. We have not retested it since then, which is very strange. Right, it's currently sitting down around 30 grand. So this could be a correction that's just getting underway where the bull market still has a lot of legs left, but it just needs to correct back down to that level before new buyers step in. So again, it's a way too soon to call a cycle top on this thing. We just don't have enough information. As far as long-term investments go, me personally, you know, I'm a very patient person. I'm not 
um, you know, opposed to waiting many, many months or even years to invest in something. Like back here when I was waiting for 4,000, I had to wait nine months. And then of course, COVID scared me out, you know, and I didn't buy much of it at all. But this time around, when I'm waiting for to be an investor, not a trader, totally different things. So you can trade every single day, every single time frame. Yeah, you, know, you can go long and short, you know, the same day, that's fine. But as far as investing goes, buying spot, I'd like to see this thing pull back, you know, uh, at least into the golden pocket, but really for me personally, and this is just my personal preference, I'm still expecting that this will eventually make its way back down to 10 to 12K at the very least, right? And kind of fill in some of this, you know, mess that it made by pumping the way it did. That's me, right? That's not everybody and that's fine. Um, I'm still sitting on some crypto, even though I am bearish in nature, even though I do think that it's very likely this has more downside to come over the you know, next several months. I, I'm fine. I sold a lot of crypto. I still have a fair amount of crypto left. I think the one thing that separates me from a lot of these people that do these YouTube videos is they never talk about how much they actually have, right? They like to pretend they have loads of it, but I have a feeling most of them don't really have near as much as they pretend to have, right? And the thing is, is I consider what I have a, a fairly small portfolio in cryptocurrency, but it's in, in reality, experience tells me it's probably more than what most of these guys out there have, right? I used to be in the marketing world. I was an internet marketer for a very long time. And I can remember when I was coming up, there's all these people and, and I looked up to them and I thought, man, I, you know, hopefully one day I can get to their level, right? And at the time when I was thinking that I was actually making about 30 grand a month and looking up to these guys. And then as I got kind of rose through the ranks or whatever you want to call it and got to know a lot of these people in this in this marketing world before I retired from it, right? Come to find out I was actually making more money than a lot of those guys who were always on Facebook pounding their chest with the fancy cars and stuff. It's just they're living up to their eyeballs in debt to portray that certain lifestyle, whereas I was more of a minimalist and not spending my money on crazy stuff like that, right? So I think it's the same thing with trading. I think a lot of the guys, you know, are not doing as well as they portray. And I think it's unfortunate because I think it gives people a, not only FOMO, but I think it makes people depressed. Like, gosh, you know, everybody else got rich except for me. Trust me, that's not the case. You know, very, very few people that are, are talking about Bitcoin on social media are getting rich off of it. They probably had like a tenth of a Bitcoin or a thousand dollars of the Bitcoin that went up to 10 or 20 grand or whatever, right? And that's a lot of money. And I'm not saying it's not, but listen, it's not, it's not life-changing money for most people, right? Uh, I, I held on to a few Bitcoin. Uh, once upon a time, I had a lot more, but I did hang on to a few Bitcoin. I took profits on most of it at this point, but I'm still sitting on a, a fairly significant amount of Bitcoin. I look at it like this. If I'm wrong and this thing completely goes bonkers, it's still you know, completely feasible that my Bitcoin, my cryptocurrency, not just Bitcoin, but all my crypto, will someday be worth seven figures. If I'm right, you know, it's, it's going to be a pretty big punch in the gut because I didn't cash it all out. But, you know, it is what it is. It's all profits anyway. So it's kind of one of those things where, you know, I don't have it now. It's just numbers on a screen. So it's not going to kill me if, if you know, I'm right and this thing goes back down to 10 to 12K. My hope for cryptocurrency is that if it does go back down to 10 to 12K eventually, and we're talking 6 to 12 months, right, that it's able to survive and that this run, it doesn't do so much damage that, um, it gets regulated out of existence. So we'll kind of see how that goes. On the smaller time frame, let's get rid of the volume profile. We all see it, we know what it looks like. On the smaller time frame, here's what I'm kind of watching. You know, this thing pumped up, um, came down. This is all fine. This could be a correction, all that kind of stuff. One thing that does make me kind of wonder about this, you know, if you're a bull, you might want to be a little bit concerned that this came up and basically kissed the golden pocket just kissed that 61.8 almost perfectly and then started to move down further and it didn't just dip it really went down 12.24 percent you know almost 6500 dollars drop pretty big deal so it could be that this thing is trying to form up a downtrend and if that's the case our downtrend might end up looking something like this where we have a trend target of 37k the target makes sense right it totally would make sense uh, it's got a 1.618 of down around 28K and you can you know kind of go on from there. But the other thing is, and, and this is why I'm saying we don't have enough information and we'll make a decision yet. The other thing is this could just as easily be, you know, a pullback, a correction and continue going up because if you look at where this drop stopped at, it's just the opposite. We got this move up, 
which technically put in a higher high, right? And here's your low, your lower high, your lower low, your lower high, higher low, higher high. See, it's higher than this back here. And this is weird because it's kind of a lower low type of situation, kind of, sort of, right? Depending on how you look at it. But what's interesting is how it's actually kissed the golden pocket there. So this could also be a new uptrend for me, right? Where it ends up looking something like this. We just don't have enough information yet. And that's really the bottom line. So me personally, when I'm looking at this and I'm trying to decide if I do want to cash out more of my crypto, right? Because I'm very, very careful not to get too gung-ho and just sell everything, uh, which I wasn't careful enough in 2020. I was so bearish that I was selling off a lot of crypto. For example, I sold off you know, around a half of Bitcoin down around 13K. Well, in hindsight, we can now say, well, dude, that half of Bitcoin you know, would be worth $20,000 more today than what you sold it for. Yeah, it would have. You know, that's definitely painful when you look back like that. So I'm trying to be patient. What I want to do is I want to wait and see if it can get a close above this level. If it does, obviously, I think you got to say, well, this is still an uptrend with a lot of, you know, or at least some gas left in the tank. On the flip side, if it takes out this low back here, I'm going to go ahead and say that's probably going to go ahead and be a new downtrend. And this is probably the top, right? What I want to do is I want to wait for confirmation. I don't want to get crazy and sell on the dip, right? Unless it's just absolutely apparent that it's not a dip, but it's actually the start of a downtrend. But I'm also not looking to buy more Bitcoin up here. Any trades that I'm taking are going to be small time frame trades, you know, maximum maybe a day or two, like a swing trade if I see a good setup on a four or six hour chart, you know, or even a daily chart, but certainly not looking for position trades, which has been the case for a long time, right? It really has been my case for a long time. I've been very, very... Uh, reluctant to take any type of long-term trades. One thing I will throw out there, this has been brought to my attention a couple of times, and I think it's neat, and I know most people would assume that I would be all over this because it supports this bearish viewpoint, uh, but this new indicator people have asked me about called the Pi Cycle, again, neat, use it if you like, right? Use it with some of the other stuff that you use in your trading, but just be aware that there's not enough data to really support this thing as being a legitimate indicator. Now, what I mean by that is if we go back in time, people are very excited. And again, I get it. I'm not knocking anybody, but they're very excited because this indicator actually called the perfect top in 2017, which is really impressive. There's no taking away from it, right? So it called the perfect top here. And then in 2013, it called basically the perfect top again, right? This is a Coinbase chart, so it's not going to have the history. Let's go over to Bitstamp. So daily chart. Again, we said that it called the perfect top in 2017. And we said that it called the perfect top or near perfect top in 2013. You can see it right here. It simply does not get much better than that. This one wasn't quite as perfect. It was down around $1,034. So it was, you know, oh, about 12% off the top, but still really nice. But the problem I see is you go back more and, and you know, people here, I, I saw somebody saying that, you know, it's predicted the top within a couple of days. Well, that's fine. But the problem is, is those couple of days really mattered, right? If you look at it from that, you know, cycle top call, it actually pumped 82, almost 83% in the next five days. So to put in that perspective, Bitcoin is currently around $47,000. If it were to pump 80% from there, that would put it up you know, in the neighborhood of eighty to $90,000, right? That's a pretty big deal. You really don't want to miss out on 80% pumps. But that aside, the other thing that I see with this that, that is a problem for me personally is one, two, three signals in the entire history of Bitcoin is not enough data to go off of, right? It's good, it's a start, but it's not enough to say, hey, this is where I'm definitely going to, you know, go short on Bitcoin or this is where I'm definitely going to sell my Bitcoin. I mean, imagine you try to go short back here on this first one, which you probably wouldn't have because it was the first time that, you know, the signal ever came in. But imagine somebody went short there and then ended up getting stopped out on that 80 percent pump, you know, be pretty brutal. But something to watch, you know, if you've got other indicators that you're using that make you think that the top is in, maybe that could be like another factor that you say, hey, this is just, you know, strengthening my thesis with all this. I think it's important to understand that when you look at a chart without the future data, because we don't know what the future brings, it's really easy to look at this and say, well, this definitely looks like a top, right? This looks like the top. 
this looks like an A leg, this looks like it's going to be a B leg, and then we're going to get this big C leg. That's totally possible. I mean, it, it could be that we end up getting something like this, right, where it comes down and even puts on a head and shoulders. We don't know. But if you go back in time and you look at you know, the previous bull market, uh, just as an example, right, when this thing pumped up to $5,000, you may or may not have been trading Bitcoin. I was, and this looked like the top, right? You, if you didn't know it was going to go to 20K or 50K, this looked toppy. It was about five times the previous all-time high, back around $1,000 in the previous cycle. So huge, huge gains, right? And it dropped all the way down to about 200 bucks, a little under 200 bucks, and then shot up to 5K. So, you know, the people who have bought the bottom were up 25X on Bitcoin. And then it started to have this, you know, A leg, B leg, boom, C leg. And it was like, yep, that's the cycle top. But what actually happened was it was just a correction. It was just a correction and nothing more in a bull market. And then it went up instead of being 5,000 on the top, top ended up being 20,000, which we now know because we have hindsight. So this could very easily you know, happen again. It could be that that 58K was a 5K, right? That it's gonna have this ABC type of correction finally. Maybe it does you know, correct 30, 40%, whatever the case is. And it's entirely possible that it's gonna find support and move up from there. If you look at this, this was this old area of demand back here. In this case, it was a little easier to go long there for professionals, because it did come down and kiss that golden pocket. I, I don't know that we're gonna get that type of correction this time, right? It also hit that 19 week moving average right there. So there's a lot of reasons to be bullish, testing demand, 61.8. Uh, you know, bullish retest of the 19 week moving average. And there's probably other factors as well. So, you know, you want to watch for that because if you come over here to 2021, you, we've got this big zone of demand through here, right? This could absolutely come down, you know, have some type of correction, not on the entire move up, but maybe just on this particular move, like a local move, come back down to the 61.8 around 40K, right? Get something that looks like this, boom, test that demand. And this thing could just keep going up from there. So you really wanna be like open to all the possibilities. I understand you know, better than anyone, or well, better than most, I would say, not anyone, but better than most. I understand that this thing looks unsustainable. I agree. I think long-term, I, I firmly believe that 10 to 12K is a realistic target, but I don't know how high it goes first, right? I, I just don't know. There's been a lot more people coming on and stuff, and it's enough to make me say, eh, you know, I don't know. I look at the monthly chart. This is obviously problematic seeing, you know, this goes straight up like this. Even on a log chart, it's now parabolic, right? I, I see the signs that this is certainly looking like a bubble. I see the signs that the stock market is in a bubble. I see the signs that, you know, we have all these economic issues that we're facing, but the stock market isn't, you know, looking at that. They're simply speculating. I also see all the data that says that people are severely over leveraged, not just in the stock market, but cryptocurrency. You look at cryptocurrency and you go to a site like this is data mish, I guess is what they call it, dot com. For those of you that want to check it out, it's a free site, right? And when you look at the ratio of longs to shorts, right now it's about 90% long and about nine and a half percent short, right? Not as bad as it was. At one point it was about 97 to three, but still very, very heavily to the long side, and there's almost no unhedged shorts, right? There's very, very few shorts right now. So it's a very crowded trade on the long side. If you go look at things like the uh, liquidations chart, right? We can see that it's really the longs that have been getting smoked here. It has not been the shorts. It's been longs getting smoked over and over and over to the tune of billions and billions of dollars. If you search all coins, I haven't looked at it in the last couple of days, but we're probably talking five billion plus and longs have been washed out. So there's a lot of people who are over leveraged. Now look at this. The open interest on these exchanges is completely insane, right? $13.6 billion in open interest on Bitcoin alone, right? That's people borrowing money to trade Bitcoin. And what happens with that, we've talked about this in past videos, what happens when people are leveraged like that, they don't have a choice if the market starts to move down, they have to sell. If they don't sell, they'll be liquidated and it will sell for them. And that's what creates that downward pressure that can create those really, really big sell-offs that happen very, very quickly, right? And if there's not enough people stepping in to buy those sell-offs, and, and I'd imagine you know, it's gonna be a little tougher to get people to buy up here at 50K, you know, it can get really nasty really quick. The big difference back the last time we had a huge sell-off like that was in March, 
And the difference being is as it shoots through those liquidations, two things happen. Number one, BitMEX actually went down for maintenance, and a lot of people believe that that actually you know, stopped a lot of those liquidations that would have occurred and would have pushed the price much lower. But number two, people actually were wanting to buy down there. There were a lot of people like myself who felt like $4,000 was a good area to buy. Now, unfortunately for me, I didn't stick to my guns and I let COVID scare me and I, I only ended up buying a very, very small amount of Bitcoin versus you know buying back all the Bitcoin that I had sold. That was a huge, massive mistake. Again, just because I didn't know there were a lot of people who did have the courage to, to do so and they picked that Bitcoin up and we had this zone of demand, went right down into it and you know, off it went. I would say a lot of institutions were actually buying back here, right? You put volume on here, you'll see it, right? We have this massive volume bar. We get it on a daily chart. And I know this video is getting long, but hell, I'm only doing one or two a month, so let's just do it, right? You had this massive volume, about 113,000 sell volume, but the very next day you had 130,000 buy volume, which showed a, you know, a huge amount of people willing to buy a Bitcoin at those levels. I don't think we're going to see the same type of reaction if it starts to cascade from 50K. I think most of those institutions will be the ones selling and waiting for this to drop down to the levels where, you know, general retail is kind of like, ah, I'm over it, you know. Down here around 10 and 12K, a lot of people will lose interest in Bitcoin, and that's where I think a lot of the big players will eventually be, you know, scooping it up. So this was a pretty big accumulation range. You know, again, hindsight's always 20-20. Right. If you really look at this, this was our little accumulation range. It popped up and that really just ranged sideways. You know, obviously it had a downtrend in the bottom of the range. And then when it broke out, it had all this accumulation to kind of work off of. So it's completely normal that it might come back down to the top of that range. Right. And, you know, obviously it could go lower, but we'll see. Um, anyway, this is going to be a bit of a nightmare to edit because I had to stop the video a few times and go take care of some personal stuff. Um, but I'll do my best to edit it and hopefully it's, you know, coherent and kind of let you know what I've been up to and, you know, what I'm thinking on all this uh, personally. And I'll just drop this little tip out there for you. I've been doing a lot of options trading and, and not just day trading options. I've been doing a lot of that, too. But I've also been loading up on puts in the stock market because when the stock market was very, very bullish up until this week, a lot of those puts were super cheap and I was able to buy some really good contracts. Uh, for two years out, you know, January 2023 contracts for pennies on the dollar. And I'm up huge on a lot of those now that the market has actually started to pull back um, hundreds of percent on some of those options. And now what I've got to do is I've got to figure out, do I want to close those options and take those big, big wins? Or do I want to hold them uh, and see if, you know, the market actually does tank. But anyway, there's still a lot of good deals out there. You, you know, it might be best to wait for some type of dead cat balance or something to see if the, the puts, you know, go down in price. But that's what I've been up to the last few weeks is really, you know, accumulating put positions on stocks. So anyway, I don't want to sound like an options fanboy. It's just something I've gotten into and I've had a lot of fun with. With all that being said, I'm some guy, right? Literally some guy sitting in a spare bedroom. So I've been wrong before. I guarantee you I will be wrong again, and I could be wrong about all this this time around, right? I'm bearish. Who knows if that's correct? What you should do is check with a licensed financial advisor and do your own due diligence before making any type of investment in cryptocurrency, the stock market, or precious metals. And if you haven't already, you should hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and check the description for a link where you can join my Patreon for just $7 a month. And as always, this is James with Crypto Common Sense reminding you to please trade safe.